At first glance, Innerspace looks like a very peaceful flight simulator, but in reality, it's more of an exploration game set in an inverted world that looks like an abstract painting. This new game is available on the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and the PC this week. Soar through the skies and explore the deep caverns of the sea as you discover the history of the lost civilizations in the inverse. Innerspace has you play as a cartographer, a drone created by the archaeologists to help them uncover the secrets and mystery behind the inverse. The inverse is a world where gravity is inverted pulling outward rather than inward. The end result of such an odd science is this world that looks like an abstract painting come to life. This world isn't going to last though, it's slowly closing, falling apart, and the archaeologist wants to explore it and uncover its secrets before it's lost forever. That's your job as you take the airframe or the equivalent to an airplane in this game into the inverse, exploring the remains of the civilizations that once lived there. You progress through the game as you collect relics that slowly reveal new information about the inverse, the people that used to live there, and the demigods that were left behind. The story is told from a linear perspective, but being a game that revolves so much around exploration, it doesn't completely hold your hand throughout the journey. This means that the story does slow down and speed up bearing on the skill of the player and how long it takes them to find old relics. The end result is an alright story, but I felt like I was more pulled by the abstract world than the story itself that they were trying to tell. It's nice to get a bit of context to the things you're collecting and how these worlds connect, but ultimately I think the exploration gameplay spoke louder than the story, and that's honestly not saying much. Innerspace is all about exploration and collecting. As you dive into the inverse, you're left with sandboxes to fly and swim through. Your airframe transforms and adapts according to the environment it's in. When its wings open up, you can soar through the air, and when it closes its wings, it becomes a compact submarine. You start off with one airframe, but as you progress through the game and collect relics, you unlock new airframes with different stats. Now, with any game that has you primarily control a vehicle, a lot of the quality of the gameplay varies on how well the game controls, and for the most part, Innerspace does a good job. I played on a PC with an Xbox One controller. With the left stick, you control the direction of the airframe while the right stick controls its left and right spin. Pushing up on the right stick acts as a boost while pushing down makes the airframe slow down. The right shoulder button transforms the airframe between the different terrains, and the left shoulder button acts as a charge boost that slows down the airframe before boosting forward. In wide open areas, the airframes are a breeze to control. That's a given as there's a ton of room for error in the navigation. Scattered all around the inverse are these little white transparent orbs that act as little parking spots called perches. Here you can pause as you get a sense for your surroundings and you can reroute the point of direction. That's the general navigation of the inverse. Using these controls you'll look for relics and when to power those relics. In some instances you'll have to solve puzzles like activating flip switches or tearing apart strings that hold structures together. In other situations you'll look for cracked parts of a structure or a window that require you to blast through them. Ultimately the gameplay boils down to getting good at navigating your airframe not just in wide open spaces but also tight closed spaces too. That's where the game can get challenging and at times frustrating. Relics tend to hide in tight spaces that require pretty well timed navigation. For the most part, I didn't really have any trouble playing through these sections. If you hit a wall, the game just bumps your airframe back and you continue on your way. Your airframe doesn't have a visible health gauge, but it does take damage. In some situations, you can get stuck hitting a wall and be caught in a loop, and that's where it really becomes frustrating. These can get really annoying, and the worst part is, they can be motion sickness inducing. After a few seconds of turmoil, the game will explode the airframe and respond you back to a nearby stationary spot. While that may sound like a nitpick, it becomes more of a constant issue, especially because of the visual design of the game, which we'll dive into in a little bit. While the idea of exploring sandboxes in your hybrid plane and submarine sounds fun and calming, there's very little substance here to back it up. The idea for the gameplay is cool in theory, but there's little depth here and a lack of motivation to keep on playing because of it. That motivation only gets thinner in those moments where you start to lose patience trying to find a relic. Innerspace has a very colorful and bright art style over it. It reminds me a lot of No Man's Sky, not in the sense that there are ships in both games, but rather the palette of colors looking similar. It has a similar art style to games like Rhyme and Abzu, two games I reviewed last year, but both of them had a much larger color palette than this game. That art style and color palette can be an issue with the gameplay as there's an abundance of blue everywhere in the game. The water that you can go through is only a slightly different shade of blue than the shadows of the rocks that you can go through, or the glass that only sometimes you can go through, depending if they're cracked or not. It's as convoluted as that entire sentence just was. 
I played the PC version on a GTX 970 i7 4790K at 1080p 60 and for the most part it was pretty stable. On consoles the performance varies between platforms. PS4 and Xbox One looks like it runs at 1080p 60 while performance gets a dip on the Switch. On the Nintendo Switch it looks like the game runs at 720p 30 with much softer looking models throughout the game. The resolution isn't as intrusive as much as the frame rate is though. That 30fps really does hinder the gameplay, especially in moments where you get stuck in tight spaces. I thought it was pretty motion sickness inducing at 60 frames per second and it only gets worse at 30 frames. Interspace takes audio design to another level and sometimes it works well and other times it just doesn't. Most actions in this game have some sort of sound effect attached to them that plays a music note. Altogether it sometimes sounds like a symphony and other times, well honestly most of the time, it sounds like someone is just hitting every single instrument in an empty music class. It's going to be subjective to the player and for me it's really just not there. Sometimes I thought the sound design was clever like when I interacted with something and the sound effect and response felt perfect for the action. An example of that was whenever the airframe wings chimed in when I turned the vehicle left or right. Other times I paused the game because I just would hear a random ringing and I thought one of my tabs in Google Chrome was playing a phone ringtone for some reason, like whenever a dialogue was being displayed on the screen. The goal with the audio here I think was to be clever and have it all mixed together to create some sort of song throughout the game, and I feel like it just went overboard at times. Only rarely and occasionally hitting that spot, but for the most part just coming out as a mess. Interspace is an ambitious exploration game with a very out of this world setting. It may look like a flight simulator that's meant to be a peaceful flying game, but it's more of a game to get lost in as you explore and collect relics. Its ambitions can make the game fun and a mess depending on the execution. Exploring the wide open areas of the inverse is great to get lost in, but the game can also get pretty messy the moment you enter a tight space and the controls go haywire. The same can be said anytime you mistake one shade of blue for another. The audio design is just as messy, if not worse, and it peaks in those moments where you get stuck in a tight space as the sound effects just sound like a large abrupt crash that goes mute seconds later. Ultimately, Interspace is just an interesting looking game, but one that crashes when it reaches out for its ambition. It's a game with high goals, but very little substance to back it up in pretty much every department. That does it for my review of Interspace for the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. If you do have any questions that I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comments down below, or you can just hit me up on Twitter, Snapchat, or Instagram. Those are in the description down below. If you're new to my channel and like the content, then consider subscribing. I do reviews on PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch, and if you have any requests for games coming out in the future, you can leave those in the comments down below. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.